such a thing we do not bear. Would you accept delayed payment of your fare? Unacceptable are these terms, for the destination a colored flame confirms. This is bullshit! Saving it for something else, but you leave me no choice. Skip the word game and use your own green flame. Oh, shit! A coin of undeath. Oh. Oh! I get it. You know what? They had me in the first half. I'm not going to lie. No, and the reason... They set this up really well, actually. Um, They set this up really, really well. Because they showed her in this garb earlier in the game. She's like standing up on a mountaintop like just watching over us. And she does her whole portal thing and walks away. So they introduced this character, this like ninja character, and then, you know, time gap, and then we see the captain who like is dressed completely differently. And I had a week in between to forget about seeing the, the girl earlier. And then, like, I was expecting the captain to show up. Because she's like, oh, yeah, I gotta go uh, check on something or whatever. And then when she does show up through the portal, dressed completely differently, I'm like, oh shit, I was expecting the captain, but I guess it's her. I remember seeing her from earlier. So yeah, like I, I mentally I kind of played myself. It took until now to make the, to make the connection. The compelled undead complies, but a one-way trip is all this buys. Yeah, we'll worry about that later. Cliché is definitely a fake name. But Sirai might also be a fake name. Yeah, I noticed that too. She kind of goes in and out of the pirate accent. Uh, it is indeed the dead you hear, for the necromancer lives somewhere near. Should you wish to save your hide, a green flame you must provide. Let's find the extravagant lair. This seems like safe water to swim in.
Ho, ho, ho! It's just mushrooms. Not even close to worth it. That's literally all there was. At least that I could find. I see. This is a punishment. So this raises the question then. Literally are any of them actually pirates? If that is, in fact, her real name. Chomp chomps. Oh, that's a spot to me. survived. And we big survive, actually. I feel like there is a strong necessity to do more damage faster.
That looks like it would hurt. Leveling up does not recover your health. Good to know. Yes. Yes. Oh, perfect. How incredibly opportune. Oh, Jesus, I didn't know you could do that. Um... I don't know what the fast forward means, but I know what it could mean, and I don't like it. What's up? Counts as undead. This is either a new enemy type or an NPC. It's hard to tell. NPC. Greetings, I am the keeper of this graveyard. I suggest you turn back as soon as possible, for the mistress of this place is not fond of company. Understood, but honestly, you had me at mistress. But not in the way you probably wanted to. random spell every time they do that. Ow. That hurt worse than anything else they've done. It's a good battle theme because I don't really get tired of listening to it, which is like the most important thing for a battle theme. But I will say that it, I wouldn't, I don't think it gets me excited every time. It just is like all right to listen to all the time.
I think the strength of a battle theme is like, how much nostalgia do you get for hearing it after the fact? And that I won't know for a while. Yeah, I get that. I'm not there yet, but I've definitely had instances where, like, sometimes it's unexpected. Sometimes I go through the game and I don't really think that much of the battle theme. And then I hear it again later and I'm like, oh, shit. Oh, yeah. And it's almost kind of unexpected that I feel that strongly about it. And that's how I know it's a good battle theme. Lots of stuff, lots of stuff from Xenoblade Chronicles is like that for me. Some of them I liked, like, right away. Some others I just kind of sort of ignored. They're just kind of there, but then I hear them later on and it's like, oh shit. Yeah, exactly. I would argue that, like, epic and bombastic boss theme, like, those shouldn't be your everyday normal boss theme. Magus's theme isn't Magus's theme if you hear it all the time. It's important because it comes in at a climactic moment in the game and you tie the feelings of being at that moment and then the music kicking in, which brings everything up to like a new height. And you're hearing stuff that you haven't heard before and it's like everything's exciting because it's new. But like the normal battle theme shouldn't be doing that. Gang of the Mistress put oneself in danger. Why do I get the feeling that this mistress is going to join the party? Is this an educated guess or is it just wishful thinking? No, because if you had a new story, you'd tell me. Stay alert. The necromancer won't be happy to see us. The way you're building up this woman, I really feel like she's probably just misunderstood. Good thing Soraya arrived when she did. Yeah, it was really, like, almost kind of overly convenient, wasn't it? Crazy that. Yeah, I was thinking that when I was making it, but then I was like, you know what? At the rate I'm using items, 
like, eventually, someone will actually have 100 HP. And if not, Garl does. What the hell is going on? Yeah, no, I absolutely get that. I absolutely get that, Nova. Completely agreed. Like, a lot of people talk about, uh, you will know our names. From, uh, from Xenoblade. And honestly, I thought that was like a so-so boss theme while I was playing it, until I finished it. And then I was like, oh shit, this slaps. And makes me feel really good because I'm remembering the game now. I think the only theme, I shouldn't say the only. There were a lot that I liked, but... Um... Of the battle themes, the one that really, like, hit me initially, where I was like, oh shit, this is awesome. And then, like, I went to go, like, what is the name of this track? I have to listen to it, is uh, Mechanical Rhythm. Which is the uh, random battle theme when you get to the, uh, it's the random battle theme on the Mechonis. And it like starts off with a guitar riff and a, 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 a guitar riff, and I'm like, oh fuck. Where the fuck do I go from here? Oh. You read, that's what you Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Oh, I guess this has to be it. That looks... Oh, wait, no, I... Ne never mind. I see what it is now. I was, um... I was only looking at, like, the middle part of that, and I was seeing something su suggestive. Stay vigilant, Rumaya might be home. Well, shit. This feels good. I mean, it might. I have high expectations for this. No, but I need to play Xenoblade Chronicles 3, and I might now that I'm finally done with, uh, with my most recent Muso obsession. Flip side, Persona 3 Reload and Unicorn Overlord are coming out. As well as uh, Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. So, fucking... 
hundred hour RPGs dropping out of the sky onto my face in the next two months. We need a soul stone to save our friend. We're going in. Then we are at an impasse, for I am bound to serve the mistress in undeath. She resurrected you from your ashes? Who are you? Generations ago, I was known as Duke Aventry. That is all I can remember. I am now but a wandering spirit, forever lost in longing. Despite this cruel fate, I am blessed by ignorance as to what became of my beloved family's mansion and the good people of Lucent. But I digress. The spectral chains that bind me to the mistress beckon. Please understand, this brings me no joy. On guard! Is this a new boss fight? A uh, new boss team? No, I've heard this before. Now I feel bad! No, but I played Xenoblade 1 and 2. So, like, 3 is only a matter of time. It just takes me a long time to get to them. I have it on the shelf. I bought it in Korea because the exchange rate made it like this does. That may have been a waste, but I don't... I, I want to know how long that sticks around. Get another one. Wait, no. Tornad. That 
that's fine. Oh, that wasn't actually hard. The last boss was really hard. Duke Aventry was... Not. I believe the mistress would rather not lose her bodyguard. You may pass. I think you are misunderstanding what a bodyguard is. Actually. But before you go, may I have a word with the blade dancer? Your speed is impressive. Have you ever tried leaning into it more fully? Let me show you. dudes teaching special moves and shit so characters learn new moves at key parts of the story because Valer learned her thing when uh... Valer learned her thing when uh, Garl ended up like laid up in bed and hers was a protection skill. Aventry just gave a lesson. As expected, you are a natural. Safe journeys, young ones. Cool? That's probably fine. We'll just loot that and no one will care. Wait, hold on. Wait. Mermov Wizcord? What the fuck words am I looking at?
correct? Is it actually literally a messenger enemy? Because you know it's been a while since I played. I've heard this game is getting DLC soon that's supposed to, like, connect it more directly to the messenger, which is really exciting. again. And then there's just another different layer? I mean, sure, I'll fuck with the Stalpos. But first, a camp. Did? When did I find when? I mean, I definitely heard about the three sisters, but when did I find an artifact relating to them? I'm not feeling like story time just yet, so we'll read that story later. No. Mm. You know what? I said that. But now that I think about it, like we're li this is relevant right now, so we should probably read it. <sighs> it is said that whenever twins are born on a solstice, fate itself flips a coin. Their innate magic would either be incredibly heightened or corrupted into something that ought to be contained for the greater good. For generations, many solstice warrior twins have accomplished great deeds, but despite their immense potential, could never ascend into guardian gods. That's a new, fr that's a new term. For ascension, requires one of the winter and one of the summer, but kindred souls are not meant to part for eternity. On a particularly warm summer solstice, fate's coin landed on its edge and, tri and triplets were born. As the great eagle's instincts indicated, it soon became apparent that morality had split itself in three, as if to see their innate magic expressed in distinct flavors because their actions would inevitably drive them far away from each from one another. They were giving annoyingly similar names. Moyara, Yomara, and Romaya. Moyara was flown to Moon Cradle, where she became a formidable solstice warrior and Zenith Academy's headmistress. Oh, shit. No, wait, that's not, this must, that's not who was there when we were there, was it? No. Okay, yeah, got it. After the stalwart protector, Moyara gave her life while leading the charge against the Dweller of Strife. Yomara was the neutral one 
better known as the Crone of Songshroom Marsh. Living a secluded life, she is an observer of the distant future, offering cryptic insights on key events and looming threats that may or may not transpire. By age five, she had correctly predicted that the Fleshmancer would leave if the Dweller of Strife were defeated at the cost of Moyara's life. Despite her immense power, she remains impartial in all conflicts. Meanwhile, Romaya devoted her every waking moment to studying what could be understood of the Fleshmancer's ways, and developed forbidden arts of her own. Through her understanding of blood magic, she became the first necromancer and devised a way to trap souls within objects. One notable, one notable invention of hers is candles that never burn out, noticeable by Romaya's signature green fire. Through their extreme commitment to differing paths, the three sisters have prompted countless musings on the choices one makes in life. To live bravely and selflessly like Moyara, and embrace an early death while fighting for a worthy cause. Or to live a quiet and peaceful, albeit solitary life, like Yomara, foregoing ambition for the sake of safety, but never discovering one's true self. Or perhaps to indulge oneself like Romaya with utter confidence in her ability overcome any retribution she might face as a result of her corruption. Could the three sisters truly be a trick of fate? Or a spiteful game of gods unknown? Or is it simply that, in our search for meaning, we sometimes mistake pure happenstance for prophecy? It is probably for the best that we shall never know. Dark Soul shit that I did not fully understand. Ah, with the last one. Okay, that makes sense. And one of them went over here, and one of them went the other way. Okay.
I feel like I'm walking above the opera house on these. Did my guy just self-destruct? I don't understand, sir. We could have talked things out. Okay, yeah, he's got to go. Man, I don't have her regular attack timing. Go combo! Yeah! Way too much healing. feeling I know who's going to wear the cape. I am correct. The spectral cape with a will of its own. Okay. I see that's not based on anything. Oh, I see. I thought the ladder was just a shortcut, but it's actually kind of necessary. Oh, come on! I was gonna do the thing! That 
didn't do anything! There's a lot of switches in here that are not lit up. Oh, this is fine. <sighs> okay. All right. Travel points, enemies, and climbable surfaces. I'm listening. Yes! 